How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Simple C10. So today we're gonna install those lower control arms on the black dice. Those are the ones we put those drop pockets into. And behind me, you can see we got all the stuff for lowering spindles and disc brakes. So stay tuned, check it out. Thank you so much for your support for watching the videos. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button, like this video, check it out so you don't miss anything in the future. Another thing, if you click the title to this video, you're gonna see a bunch of links. Those are affiliate links. So click those links, get what you need, give me a shout out and enjoy the video. All right, so we're getting ready to bolt this lower control arm back in. You've got four of these. It's going to bolt in, so I'm going to hold this up kind of where it goes, get these started. And as you can see, you have a, a little guide pin that you line it up with. That's going to show you kind of where to place this. The little circle will go right there where it bolts in. And then we'll get it loosely fit. Then I'm going to go in through the top and get it with the impact. Okay, so we got our lower control arms bolted up and now it's time to install our two and a half inch drop spindles and our disc brakes. So I'm just kind of showing you what all is in this kit that we purchased. This is from eBay, it's a CPP kit. I've got the link in the description. And as I unbox this, you can see you've got the rotors, you've got the dust covers, the disc brakes themselves. I'm unboxing the two and a half inch drop spindles right now and also the master cylinder and it's all included in the kit the only thing that's not included is your brake lines that you'll need you'll need to order some of those if you need all new brake lines the most important information you're going to need to know while buying this kit is what size ball joints are currently on your truck so if you don't plan on buying new ball joints you want to make sure to get the spindles that match your current ball joints there are 70 to 71 ball joints. This kit here is the 63 to 70 ball joints, which are just the factory ones. 
and just make sure those are correct. If you plan on buying ball joints, just make sure to buy the ball joints that match your kit that you purchased. As you can see here, the kit comes with, most of the parts are just raw, so you have to paint them. We're just using some of that Rust Restore here. We're gonna paint up the spindles, the master cylinder, and also went ahead and painted the U-bolts that hold the lower control arm in as well. Then I'm gonna make me a bologna sandwich. <laughs> All right, so we just slid the two and a half inch drop spindle on here. I'm gonna put the nuts on there, the cotter pins. Um, and then we're gonna pack this with grease get all that lined up, put the brake on there, and then we'll install the disc brake once that's done. So one of the questions I get a lot is, what kind of spindle do I need? What kind of drop on here? And most of the time, two and a half inch drop spindle will get you where you wanna go. Some people offer a three inch drop spindle. The only thing about the three inch drop spindle is if you're gonna run any wheels that are smaller than like a 17, then it has a chance of rubbing the side of the wheel. So be careful of that. I've read um, online that some people have ran into issues with three inch drop spindles. You don't need three inch, two and a half will again get you where you want. And most of the kits that you buy with the brakes and the spindles and everything that you need, those are gonna be either one and a half, two or two and a half inch drop. As I've been working on the spindles, Zach installed this brake booster here. So as you saw, I painted this and he took the old one off of here, just unbolted it and then temporarily bolted this one up. These brackets will bolt into your factory holes like that. And then you've got to mark where those uh, little slots are and then drill you some holes to bolt it in there. So two drilled holes, you'll bolt that in, use two of your factory holes, and then the hardware that runs into the cab to the brake pedal, he's hooking up now. So just wanted to show you that. It's not too in depth, take the old one off, bolt that one in, mark your holes, drill them. We've got it mocked up right now. On the spindles, we went ahead and installed the upper and lower spindle nuts, tie rod ends, got some new cotter pins into those. So now we're getting ready to install the dust covers and the actual disc brakes themselves. The rotors, good, check those out. So we're gonna install that. We've gotta pack those, get all that fixed, and then we will install the brakes onto the rotors. So there's no exact science of how to pack these bearings, but as you can see on the video, Zach is just taking a little bit um, of grease at a time, and he's just kind of working in through the top grooves and the back grooves and just packing that with his thumb down into the bearing itself and working his way around and around until there's uh, enough grease that when he pushes it down, it kind of oozes out the sides. He had a good tip though as well. Go ahead and pack all your bearings first. And that way, whenever you slide the bearing into the back, whenever you slide the actual rotor onto the spindle, you've already got that front bearing packed and you're ready to slide it on and put the nut on. Now that we have the bearings packed, we're gonna place those in the back of the rotor and then we're gonna put that seal in there. And you can see Zach just using a mallet to just kind of tap that into place, get that locked in so we can install the rotor onto the spindle. Now I'm just installing the dust cover with the three bolts that it has. Super easy, get that bolted in and we'll go ahead and install the spindle on there. All right, so now comes a fun part. We get to install this brake on here. So Zach got the 
got the, um, what are these called again? Barons. Zach got the Barons packed here. He did a good job packing it. Man, you can tell he has experience. Um, so just slide it on here. Then he's got the other bearing in his hand. Good job. He can hardly stuff bear it. This slot goes in there. There we go. Did awesome. I hope you saw that. He put the front bearing in there. Then uh, the little washer, it's got a slot in it, slides right in. We're going to put the nut on there. We'll hand tighten as much as we can. And it said back it off just a hair to the cotter pin is there. There's not really any method to this, so I just kind of do it this way. So you just tightened it, loosened it, and then kind of tightened it again? I've always tightened, yeah, I've loosened it and then brought it back to kind of where it grips again. Uh huh. And then I go to the, I tighten it to the next hole. That's what I've always done. Mm -hmm. I've never had any problems. So. to the top that is important you just did <laughs> i did it was an accident but it made me think of it so because then you want you want the fluid to fill up in here and then air push all the air out the top if you install it on the bottom and you just get fluid the yeah, whole time fluid the whole time yeah so if you didn't catch that we took these little um things they look like they're bolted in but they actually slide out and whenever you get the break up there this thread threads into the actual like spindle part. So the bleeder, the little connection is going to go up top and that's just going to slide in. That's simple, guys. <laughs> Take that out, slides in, bolts in. There it is. Woo! Besides the lines and everything, we've got disc brakes now. I've got the spindles on the rotor, we've got the brakes installed. So now all we have to do is install those lines with the brake booster. It's looking good. Love new parts, nothing better. <laughs>